Some automations are just stupid, but if you do them right, they can help make your life easier and save you a ton of time. Today, we're gonna to be going over some of the tech that we use here at the studio that help make the things that we do on a daily basis be as automated and as efficient as possible. And it all kind of starts off here with this table. This is the SmartDesk 2 from Autonomous. And despite the smart in its name, it's pretty much just your standard motorized table. But what truly makes it smart though, are these buttons that we have installed on the side. These buttons are from a company called Flick, and I am a huge fan of them. They're battery operated, so you can stick them just about anywhere that you want. And to me, using them is just so much more convenient than having to talk to a smart speaker, especially for the things that you do all the time. We have five of them installed here side by side, as well as a few others that are scattered around. And with them, we can basically control the entire studio. So this first button here is when we're ready to shoot, where the first thing it does is it turns off the ceiling LEDs, and then it turns on each one of the studio lights one by one. This is all done through the IFT app, which integrates with the flick buttons, and it's using TP-Link's smart switch for controlling the ceiling lights, and a bunch of these little TP-Link smart plugs to toggle on the studio lights. And then when we're finally done shooting, the button on the opposite side here basically inverts all of that, where the studio lights come off and then the ceiling LEDs turn back on. Which with the number of times we go back and forth shooting a B-roll shot here and there, it's really nice to have. And it's something that saves a huge amount of time over the course of days and weeks. Now, this next button here is basically the studio's mute button, where if we're recording something with audio, like when I'm talking in front of a camera, it turns off the noisy little mini fridge that we have with a smart plug. And then it turns off the AC units that are controlled with Google's Nest thermostats, which ironically enough, in order to get this automation to work, we actually had to use Amazon smart routines, not Google's, since the Google Assistant doesn't work as well with Ift. But whatever, we're able to get it to work and it is awesome. Now, beyond the buttons, some things in here don't require any input from us at all, with them being fully automated. And the newest edition comes from today's sponsor in the Narwhal T10 2-in-1 Smart Mop and Vacuum. So we have concrete floors here at the studio, and they get pretty dirty. And while the T10 has a vacuum function where the attachments go on there and sweep the hard floor pretty well, here's a before and after of the dustbin from just a single cleaning. And here it is doing a good old job with the serial cleanup test. To me, the thing that really stands out about the T10 is how well it mops. Because unlike a lot of the other smart mops out there, it doesn't just drag around a wet, dirty pad. It actually has these rotating mop pads that spin around three times every second. So it's actually scrubbing the floor and it does a pretty good job at getting rid of all those nasty little stains. And the best part about it is you don't have to sit there and babysit it. The T10 soaks its pads automatically in a space station from the clean water bin. And then after going out to mop an area, it actually comes back to the base, cleans off those dirty mop pads with the specialized base floor, and then it drains the dirty water into the waste bin before going out to complete the job. And it does that job pretty well. Just take a look at how dirty the water was in the waste bin after a single clean. I told you, our floors get pretty dirty. Now, with us being in a studio with a lot of equipment and a lot of wires, one thing that I was worried about was the robot getting into areas that it shouldn't. But with the LiDAR sensor that sits on top of it, it intelligently maps out the environment, so it's pretty good at avoiding obstacles. And for those certain areas where you just don't want the robot to go at all, you can actually set up no-go zones in the app, so that way we can just leave at the end of the day and let the robot do its thing, coming back the next morning to freshly cleaned floors. It's pretty awesome. So big thanks again to Narwhal for sending it out. And if you guys wanna learn more about it, I'll be dropping a link down below in the description. All right, the next automation we have is in my office where we were able to convert the regular shades we had into smart shades with the help of Rise. Now, these little motors have the option of either being wired or battery operated. We ended up going with the battery packs. And as long as you have a bead or quarter style shade, they're surprisingly easy to install. I think it took me only 10 or 15 minutes to get each one set up. And they've been great. So we have the obvious automation set up with the shades going up in the morning and them coming down every night but there are also two other automations that have actually helped out with our workflow. So the first is around at four o'clock every day, I have the shades come down just enough so that way it blocks the glare that would otherwise be blasting my monitor. Now, I know I could technically get up and do it myself, 
But when you're working and you're in that deep state of focus, it's really nice not having any distractions and worrying about glare is one of them. And then the second automation we have is controlled with one of those flick buttons where if we need the studio to be completely blacked out, we just press on that little shade button and the shades in the office go all the way down, allowing us to get these really cool pitch black B-roll shots. Now I did consider a couple of other smart shades, but the reason why I went with Rise is one, the battery packs that they have are pretty much the cleanest. They just like snap off and on and make it really easy to charge. And two, they also come with physical touch controls where some of the other ones I saw made you have to use an app. So like having the option to manually do it if we wanted to, it is nice, but honestly, for the most part, it's all automated. But I think that's pretty much everything that we've done so far. Now, I know a lot of this stuff can seem like we're just being lazy and you know, part of that is true, but when you're trying to spend your time as efficiently as possible, especially in a work environment like this, I think they're well worth it. And I'm actually looking to add more automations, but we'll save that for another video. Anyways, that is it for me in this video. I'll be putting the links you need down below in the description if you guys are interested. Thank you for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the very next episode.